He's been called the most powerful figure in contemporary art. Certainly the work of China's Ai Weiwei is diverse, sculpture, photography, installations. His life work is something more. It's been a profound defense of freedom of expression and individual rights. And for that, he's paid an enormous personal price. He's become the absent artist. He was barred from attending the Toronto opening of a new retrospective, but he's still reaching out. In a Canadian broadcast exclusive, Ai Weiwei spoke to the CBC's Jian Gomeshi from his Beijing studio. The whole situation in China is uh, still very messy and very confused. There's so many people get arrested uh, in recent days. That's a duty for artists to express his uh, true feelings. So if I have to uh, pay some kind of price, you know, I'm ready for it. Hello, this is Ai Weiwei. Chinese artist and activist Ai Weiwei was detained by police in the Beijing. The artist is known for being openly critical of the ruling Communist uh, Party. Of ridiculous crime. The Chinese government says he evaded paying uh, tax. No one has heard from him since. Ai Weiwei was arrested on April 3, 2011 at the Beijing airport. The renowned artist made headlines across the world. One of China's most outspoken critics, he was picked up on tax evasion charges, then held in a secret detention facility. But make no mistake, he says, he was held for his views, from all accounts beaten, tortured, starved. Ai Weiwei was a missing man in China until his release 81 days later. Ai Weiwei, welcome back. The surprise announcement came via the Beijing Police Department. Hi. Sorry, I can't. You can't talk? You're not allowed to talk. I'm on prob uh, probation, sir. I cannot say anything, really sorry. He's been under house arrest ever since. A man trapped. It's not easy doing an interview across the world. We can't see each other, only hear each other's voice, me through my headphones in the Q studio, him through an earpiece hooked into a camera at his compound in Beijing. Surveillance cameras line the street. He's under 24-hour watch by a government that publicly refuses to acknowledge he exists. Ai Weiwei, how would you describe your daily life What's a daily uh, a day like for you now? Uh, every morning I wake up about seven, six or seven o'clock. I would uh, immediately get on internet. I cannot uh, use uh, China domestic internet, so I have to climb over the Great Firewall and uh, get on Twitter, so I can see news or to talk to Twitter fans to discuss current situation. Then by 9 o'clock, uh, my colleague would come, we would discuss about art shows, uh, publication, or documentary films, you know, we were trying to make um, for many, many years. And uh, in the afternoon, I would go to park with my son and uh, spend time with uh, him. And the last time we spoke, your, your movements were restricted you were still apparently under some kind of investigation by Chinese authorities. What is your situation now? Now they kind of leave me alone, but uh, they never uh, return my passport to me, and uh, they try not to talk to me. Even I make a phone call, or, or they, they never answer my phone call. I can take pictures of them. No passport means no travel. The absent artist, barred from attending his own exhibits across the world, including this one called According to What at the Art Gallery of Ontario. This is the largest North American exhibition of Ai Weiwei's work ever, and he is arguably the most well-known contemporary artist in the world today. And his work tends to consistently challenge authority. Like this, Study of Perspective, a series of photographs where, well, you get the idea. His work shocks in many ways, and he knows it. He knows that smashing ancient Han vases or painting over them causes strong reactions. 
What do you think of this? This is as destructive as Mao Zedong, <laughs> I think. <laughs> because he spoiled the old boss, right? It's a message, right? It's, he has but a when message. you say it's as destructive as Mao Zedong. Um, yeah, right. That's a heavy well, thing to say. Well, it is, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it spoiled a good part. Right. While his art thrives outside of China, inside the country, Ai Weiwei is somewhat invisible. To some, he ceases to exist. It isn't as if he went away. It's as if he was never there to begin with. I have to tell you a story, which is that the, the martial arts movie star, Jackie Chan, was recently on my show. He was sitting here in studio with me, and we were having a good interview, a good conversation. I mentioned you, and he claimed to not even know your name. Oh. What about someone like Ai Weiwei? He talks about uh, how it's difficult to be an artist and the human rights situation. Ai Weiwei? Who's Ai Weiwei? Uh, that uh, not surprise me. Uh, it's obviously he's uh, still I, playing I, I in, in, in your show. I, he knows me very well. Ai Weiwei? I, I don't know. He did the Bird's Nest Stadium in Beijing. Uh, the artist, mm. no. Okay. Oh, he's oh. very much uh, pro-garment. Uh, uh, actor. Uh, and, does it bother uh, you yeah. when you hear that? N well, it bothers me when people like him, which is very influential, not to admit the truth and not to uh, still scared of the authority. That really bothers me because he, you yeah, know, he's quite a well known and uh, he doesn't have to uh, be like that. Perhaps Ai Weiwei's most daring work is capturing those 81 days when he was detained. After I was released, so many people have a curiosity about my condition during that uh, detention. And it's very difficult because the condition of my release is uh, clearly states I can never tell anybody. As an artist, I automatically think to, to make a sculpture, trying to make as uh, precise as possible for the memory. And for people um, who has curiosity to, to see the condition, I think that's, uh, that's worth to try. Do you still feel haunted by moments of that 81 days in, in, in prison? Not as much when I was uh, just uh, released. I would always have nightmares. I become uh, more easy to get uh, tempered or angry. And uh, I w now I become uh, a bit better. I see many, many people after their release, they can never really come back to normal life again because this is just too dramatic uh, experience which has nothing related to common sense or our sense of right or wrong. It's that sense of right or wrong that first got Ai Weiwei into trouble. Sichuan province, April 2008. A massive earthquake kills more than 70,000 people. 14,000 schoolrooms are torn apart. Thousands of the dead are children. Why was the school the only building in town to crumble because of the earthquake? Other buildings in the same location did not collapse. We all know in 2008, when the earthquake happened, all the school buildings collapsed, and the building next to it doesn't even collapse. The Chinese government refuses to acknowledge that poor construction led to the devastation, with some levels of government going so far as to demand grieving parents stop their criticism in exchange for compensation. If they refuse, they receive nothing. The posters say children were murdered by corrupt officials and builders who cheated on construction costs. Ai Weiwei met with the parents who bravely refused to stay silent, listened to their stories, and it's made for one of his most ambitious projects yet. This is it, a list of names, ages, grades, birthdays, addresses, a work of art and database combined. Ai Weiwei continues to collect names, despite knowing that his work recording, memorializing these children, 
attempting in his own way to hold the government to account is one of the main reasons for his imprisonment. I post all those names on the internet, which it's it become a symbolic uh, gesture to question as, as the, the authority or put them on trial to see how incapable or to see how morally they are uh, they are wrong or they are so corrupted in in many ways. So that really made them very angry. Our team has been arrested over 40 times and uh, then still we managed to find 5,000 names. It's kind of like a miracle. We are living in a society, the government is trying to cover up any information. And uh, all the information has been either distorted or even withdrawn. This is a work Ai Weiwei calls Straight, a collection of pieces of salvaged rebar, once bent and broken, each one pulled out of the earthquake rubble, straightened and assembled with precision care. It's Ai Weiwei's monument to the victims of the Sichuan quake. One wrong turn, one wrong move, one wrong tweet. Ai Weiwei is acutely aware of his surroundings and his situation. He knows the state is watching every move, but the key is he knows. Those security cameras we told you about will hung on each of them a traditional Chinese lantern, just so they are aware he's watching them too. I will never uh, treat uh, my freedom with any kind of other kind of leisure or, 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 or property. And the freedom is in my mind. And uh, as a human, I struggle and made my effort. And uh, I, I would uh, take for any kind of consequence. If I don't be willing to take the consequence, I, I think that kind of freedom is too cheap for me. Ai Weiwei's future in China may be undetermined, but his future in the art world is secure. The more he's silenced within the country, the louder he's heard outside of it, even if he is and continues to be the absent artist. I'm Gian Gomeshi for CBC News, Toronto. The Art Gallery of Ontario is the only Canadian stop for Ai Weiwei's retrospective on view until October 27th. And our website has a behind the scenes look at the installation First of First of Street. all, we think about our architecture and can our architecture support a work like this? Just head to cbcnews.ca slash the national.